You are watching KEVU 25 News Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Adam Seibel. A convicted killer in a double shooting in Goliad has died by suicide. Inmate Daniel Mendoza is dead at age 22. On May 11, 2023, around 624 AM, Mendoza was found unresponsive in his cell. Staff members began life-saving measures and called 911. Unit medical staff arrived and assisted with trying to save Mendoza. He was taken on a gurney to the medical unit. EMS arrived and contacted the Justice of the Peace, who pronounced Mendoza dead at 716 AM. The Office of Inspector General was notified. Mendoza arrived to prison on May 12, 2021 to serve a life sentence for murder out of Goliad County and a 20-year sentence for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, also out of Goliad County. In June of 2019, the Goliad County Sheriff's Office discovered a man dead in a car parked in front of a home. A woman was found shot and taken to a hospital in San Antonio, and an infant baby boy in the back seat was not physically hurt. The murder victim, identified as Nathan Caritas, 19 and Brianna Bexley, 18, was critically hurt with one gunshot wound. Karinas was shot seven times. In March of 2021, a Goliad County jury found Daniel Mendoza guilty in the murder of Karinas and guilty of aggravated assault. The jury deliberated for less than 15 minutes. Mendoza was 18 at the time of the double shooting. The Jackson County Sheriff's Office reported a bailout, which happened at 11.43 p.m. Saturday night. A traffic stop initiated by the Jackson County Sheriff's K-9 handler deputy while on patrol. The vehicle did not stop after lights and sirens were initiated and a gray passenger pickup truck exited to Edna, exiting, running into the stop sign and heading north on FM 822. A pursuit continued north until the vehicle turned west on Country Road 112. The vehicle tried to lose the deputy by ramming through a gate and into a fence in a pasture. Approximately 11 migrants fled from the vehicle heading northwest. It's believed that eight to nine got away in the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. K-9 handler deputy was able to apprehend two migrants for U.S. Border Patrol to pick up. Hurricane season is upon us, so we want to invite you to join us for June 5th for our Storm Prep 2023. It airs at 6.30 p.m. on KAVU-TV. All right, Howie, so this week you said lots of sun. I'm hoping no hurricanes, though. Well, season starts in a couple days, Adam. I mean, we did have one about a year ago, a week or so, a week and a half before the official start of hurricane season. But... This time of year, it's probably going to fizzle out way out there in the Atlantic like the other one did. But hey, season is starting just in a few days from now. Here's a look at our radar. So things are starting to weaken and lessen. Not that we had a hardcore heavy downpour here in the crossroads, but we are seeing some showers, scattered showers throughout a good portion of the viewing area, at least on the outskirts where yesterday most of that activity stayed away from the area. Winds, yeah, calm to at best on the five mile per hour side. Overnight will drop down to 68 degrees. We'll be under mostly cloudy skies. Now, Adam just said it a moment ago, that's right. Clouds are going away, moisture is going away. We're going to see lots of sunshine with a warm up. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit, Adam. All right, thanks, Howie. We'll check back in with him in just a bit. The urgent push to avoid what would be the nation's first ever debt default as the deadline comes Millions of Americans are caught in the middle with a potential threat to Social Security, Medicare, and veteran benefits. Tonight, a frantic push for a deal, just 11 days away from what would be the nation's first ever debt default. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy telling us he had a productive call today with President Biden, with the two leaders set to meet tomorrow at the White House. Their teams now back at the negotiating table, scrambling to raise the $31 trillion debt limit. You have a drop dead date then at this time? No, we, we don't have an agreement yet. So once we, if we are able to come to an agreement, then, it, then I could have a timeline. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen today escalating her warning the government could run out of cash to pay its bills on June 1st. That's a, a, a hard right. deadline. The White House and House Republicans are still at odds over how to rein in government spending. Sources tell ABC News GOP negotiators are demanding steep spending cuts that would gut parts of President Biden's agenda in exchange for raising the debt limit. 
The president, before leaving the G7 summit in Japan, doubling down on higher taxes for big corporations or the wealthiest Americans, faulting House Republicans for what he calls extreme positions and playing politics. I think there are some MAGA Republicans in the House who know the damage that it would do to the economy. And because I am president and presidents are responsible for everything, Biden would take the blame, and that's the one way to make sure Biden's not reelected. Without a deal to prevent default, borrowing costs might soar, global markets could tumble, and millions of Americans may not get payments like Medicare and Social Security. I worked until I was 80, so I get a fairly good so Social Security check. 91-year-old Korean War veteran Bart Havens fears that check, his only source of income, will be delayed. That's my money coming back and the government's holding the strings on it. President Biden now says he thinks he has the authority to invoke the 14th Amendment, which would essentially allow the government to ignore the debt limit to keep paying its bills. The president admits that move could face legal challenges, and the Treasury Secretary has warned that it could create a constitutional crisis. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Capitol Hill. All righty, grab your cell phone and scan this QR code. This is our quick response code to download the Crossroads Today app, which you can watch us anytime, anywhere, and get breaking news alerts and vote in our viewer polls. You can learn all about our ongoing contest right there on the app, and you can also submit news tips and photos. Stay with us. Coming up, city leaders in Uvalde plan to hold a news conference tomorrow ahead of the one-year anniversary of that tragic shooting. Clouds and moisture are going to move out of the way. The sunshine is going to move in. We're going to talk all about it coming up in just a little bit. Legislative session nearing its end, or is it? 25 News Now Sunrise anchor Carolina Strain gets the latest on school vouchers from Texas Tribune Capitol reporter Renzo Downey. We're just a few weeks away from the end of the legislative session at the Texas State Capitol. We're hearing now from Renzo Downey. He is a Capitol reporter with the Texas Tribune on the latest. Welcome, Renzo. Good to see you. Sorenzo, 
Senate Bill 8, school vouchers. What a contest contentious issue it has been for at least a decade here in Texas. And how is it looking? Is there a possibility of a special session for this bill? Yeah, well, it sounded like uh, this bill might not be moving out of the House. Uh, the uh, committee chair for that committee has said he's not really looking to put that bill up to a vote. And so, you know, the votes for that bill just aren't in the House right now, it seems. Uh, and so what that's going to mean is this has been a big priority for the governor, and he's already threatened to veto this bill that you know, isn't getting a vote. He says he wants kind of a broader uh, school voucher bill. And so he's probably going to call a special session. And the rumor right now is that's going to be kind of later in the year, in the fall. So uh, we'll see what happens in this last week of the session and whether uh, lawmakers can avoid that special session. Right, because if we do go into a special session, we're going to be hitting some budgetary deadlines, maybe a little bit too closely. And yeah, potentially. All right, and what about the trans issues happening at the Capitol? There are two bills in particular, Senate Bill 14 and Senate Bill 15, that are top of mind. Yeah, so one of those bills is a bill that would uh, ban a, a transgender-related care for minors, and that bill has made its way out of the legislature now. Uh, both the House and Senate passed it uh, agreed on a couple of differences that they had with that bill, and so now it's going to be up to the governor, and he's already said that he's going to sign that one. And the other bill is about uh, transgender athletes in college sports, and that bill has passed both chambers, just a couple more differences to iron out, um, but that should be on its way to the governor soon. And how about Senate Bill 147, our very own state senator, Lois Cloakhorse, she authored this bill, and it's prohibiting foreign-owned persons and entities from countries that we're not so friendly with from starting a business here in Texas. Yeah, so it would restrict the purchase of uh, an economically important land. Uh, so like farmland, uh, mining land, uh, there'd be restrictions around whether you know companies from uh, China, Russia, the list of countries that the U.S. has flagged as uh, adversarial nations. Um, so there'd be restrictions on them, but this bill doesn't really seem to be moving out of the House. Uh, some supporters for the bill have kind of been raising the alarm that, hey, we're running out of time on the session here, and this bill isn't moving out of the House. So once again, week left in the session, we'll see uh, whether that ends up moving. Yes, it's quite interesting. Prohibiting the purchase of land, that's right, not starting a business. But buying land doesn't, yeah. doesn't hurt when you're doing that. So, Renzo, thank you so much for this update. Is there anything else you want to share with our viewers? Uh, there, there's a whole lot going on this week, so I'm sure I could talk about absolutely everything. But <laughs> I'll, I'll save them that trouble. All right, well, we'll catch up with you next week. Thank you so much, Renzo. Thanks, Carolina. So this brings us to your viewer poll this evening. You can scan that QR code on your screen to vote now. So the question, would you support a school voucher program here in Texas? Yes or no? It looks like 30% say yes, you would, and 70% say no. Thank you for voting. You can always come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to participate in those viewer polls. City leaders in Uvalde plan to hold a news conference on Monday. It will come just two days ahead of Wednesday's one-year anniversary of the school shooting at Robb Elementary School. A gunman killed 19 children and two teachers last year. Police killed the gunman more than an hour after he began his shooting rampage. The city's mayor says May 24th will be a difficult day. No city activities will take place that week. And the city council will not hold its weekly meeting to allow residents a chance to reflect on what happened and grieve in private. For more on today's news stories, you can come to crossroadstoday.com. Don't forget to submit your birthday wishes. Carolina Estrain and we'll read them live on 25 News Now Sunrise. And you can also submit a local military hero so we can recognize them. Are you happy for the clouds and rain to go away and the sunshine coming out? Well, we're going to talk all about it coming up in just a moment.
Mic check, mic check, mic check, mic check, mic check, mic check. Hello, hello, hello. Right, so Sunday's almost over, back to work and school tomorrow, but the sun's going to come out soon. Warmer temperatures with more sunshine, but then moisture is going to move back into the atmosphere, into the area later in the week. With that moisture, that's right, heat indices pushing 100, 105 for that real feel. So, going to be on the hot side this week. All right, here's what we got uh, today. 85 degrees, about three degrees cooler than we're supposed to be. So a little bit on the cooler side. Back in 2022, a year ago, 97 degrees. We were a lot warmer a year ago this time, staying in the 90s all week. We've been fighting to get to 90 uh, really uh, over the last couple weeks, but on the cooler side, especially this week with the rain and the clouds. Now, with that moisture here, a little's going to get trapped, a little bit's going to get trapped. We'll start to see some visibility getting taken down due to some fog. Some spots getting down to maybe half a mile, or not a half mile, but about four to five miles or less. This could get worse during the week, though, as high pressure moves in. If some of that moisture gets trapped, yeah, we can run into some foggy problems. Not as bad tonight. Here's our radar. So things have been improving over the last several hours, really getting down to almost nothing. Let's widen the view here. Here is what we have. Yeah. So we were very active a couple hours ago. Now really getting down to almost nothing as I open it wide open. And yeah, very limited amounts of showers. We had heavier concentrations here down to the southwest. Again, off to the northeast a little bit. And then we had scattered showers throughout the viewing area, at least the outskirts, all that seeming to wean off and go away. Here's our dew points. So these numbers are on the high side, makes it stuffy, hot and humid. You get home, you want to just turn the AC down even further because yeah, it is uncomfortable. We're going to see heat indices later in the week pushing 105 degrees. Here's our wind. So nothing in the way to fan us off and cool us down because winds really along the water, five miles per hour, you move inland almost on the calm side in some spots. All right, here's our latest boundary pushing through the area. High pressure now going to start moving in. When that happens, that's right. Going to clear out the rest of the atmosphere of moisture and clouds. We'll start to see lots of sunshine, warmer temperatures. But later in the week, we'll start to see more moisture pushing in from the Gulf. You add that moisture with the sunshine and the warmer weather. Yeah, heat indices can start pushing 100 degrees and warmer. We'll get some storms that are close, but hey, we're looking to pretty much stay dry the rest of the week. We'll look at that again on our future tracker. 
showers maybe along the coast, very scattered, widely scattered nature, if anything. So yeah, we are headed to drier days pretty much the rest of the week. Here's our marine forecast. Seas at times two feet or less. That'll keep bays on the smooth side. Looking ahead to the next couple days. So water pushing about 80, winds 10 miles per hour. So hey, if you're fishing out there or just enjoying the water, this is what you're looking at. Pretty much a range of maybe 80 degrees for that water. And some, some of them get, get even a little higher than some of those days. But 70s this evening, overnight will drop down to 68 degrees, mostly cloudy. Tomorrow, we'll start to see some more sunshine. 88 degrees. Looking ahead to the rest of the week, here is what we have. Look at that. Lots of sunshine. As I mentioned later in the week, probably start to see heat indices pushing 100 plus as that moisture moves in with all that sunshine. For more weather, news, and sports, you can go to our app. That's at CrossroadsToday.com, and that is free with any Android and iPhone. And waiting patiently, that's right, Zach is standing by for sports. Thank you, Howie. The Astros and Rangers both trying to break out the brooms this afternoon. I'll have that coming up in sports. Start of a new week and we've got three teams with two schools moving on in the postseason, starting with Hallettsville in game two versus Jordanton. Two outs in the seventh game tied at five. Jorian Wilson with the huge three run homer to give Hallettsville a late eight to five lead. He would get mobbed at home plate as they go on to win eight to five. Next up, they get the Corpus Christi London Pirates for a one game winner take all showdown this Thursday at 7 p.m. in Kennedy, Texas. Another school moving on after beating the Weimar Wildcats yesterday is Shiner Baseball. Next up, they get Mumford game one. This Wednesday at 7 p.m., all games will be at LaGrange High School. And how's this for a storyline? In baseball, Shiner eliminated Weimar, and now the girls of Shiner move on to play Weimar on their side of things. They are district rivals. That should be an exciting matchup. Out on the big league circuit, the Houston Astros trying to bust out the brooms against the Oakland A's. They didn't have their first hit until Jake Myers had a single in the fifth, which would set up this RBI single from Jose Altuve, his first of the year in the sixth inning. They would extend that lead on a wild pitch. But how about the outing from, from, from Fromber Valdez? Complete game shutout, allowing just four hits, seven strikeouts, and no walks. The Astros now winners of 10 of their last 11 and 7 in a row. Same story on the Texas Rangers side of things. As dominant as Houston has been, the Rangers still remain first place. In the second inning, it's Josh Young who gets the scoring started with his solo homer for his ninth of the year. But that's just the beginning. 
of that First inning. Later on, it's Marcus Simeon who ropes a two-run double to left to make it 3-0 Texas. And to Brady. cap off and the five-run inning, Corey Seager launches one out. Six innings out of pitcher Andrew Heaney who allowed just one run. It was unearned. Rangers win 13-3. Not too long ago, the Heat and Celtics finished, and Miami is now up, and Denver is also one win away from punching its tickets to the finals. The Lakers find themselves where no team has ever come from behind and a 3-0 hole. Historically, teams with a three games to nothing lead have a 149-0 and record. Jamal Murray had 37 for Denver last night, and for the Lakers, Anthony Davis led the way with 28 points and 18 boards. Denver walks away with the 119 to 108 victory game four tomorrow night in Los Angeles. The final day of the PGA Championship and Brooks Kepka has won his third shooting an overall minus nine. Coming in tied for second is Scotty Scheffler and Victor Hovland. The purse for this tournament worth $15 million. The Charles Schwab Challenge begins this Thursday. That has a purse amount worth $8.7 million. I would also like to congratulate my friends over at Chosen. Their 14, 12, and 10 new teams recently won big, and they have the hardware to show it. I'll look forward to showing a little bit more of that tomorrow. Adam, back to you. All right, thanks, Zach. Stay with us. Coming up, the annual Hang 8 Dog Surfing Competition was this weekend in Florida. Surfs up in Florida at a very special surf competition. The rules are simple. Ride the best wave and keep all four legs on the surfboard. The annual Hang 8 Dog Surfing event went off without a hitch this weekend. And what's even better, the event raises money for dogs in need along the coast. The event included a dog-free surf, dog surf session, <laughs> costume contest, surf competition, and activities for the little humans. Dog specialty vendors and information about rescue dogs also up for adoption. Wow. I hope those dogs wanted to do that. Yeah, I, that's that's kind of scary. I wouldn't put my dog on that. I don't know how to swim, and my yeah. dog certainly wouldn't go in that water. Yeah. No, they're not serving because of the shark factor, but they're completely on the board. They look safe, and it looks pretty sturdy for them. Yeah. Almost, almost, like, almost like a raft or a boat for them. And if they're Florida dogs, they must like the water. Oh, yeah, they grew up near the beach. Florida the beach. animals are crazy. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> but, okay, so beach weather, are we going to have that? Yeah, we are looking to have some here. They had it there in Flagler County in Florida. We're going to have it here in South Texas. Really quick marine forecast. Seas just two feet or less. Yeah, on the smooth side. So this evening, we'll be in the 70s overnight, dropping down into the high 60s. Again, dew points on the high side, so it's going to feel hot, sticky, and humid. Looking ahead, here's what we have for tomorrow. 88, partly sunny skies. That's a nice day for the beach. Zach was impressed with that stat as he was just looking over me when he was looking at that. And looking ahead to the rest of the week, here is what we got. So Monday, mostly sunny most of these days are either partly sunny or mostly sunny for the most part even partly cloudy there's a lot of sun temps mid to upper 80s away from the water probably the lower 90s but later in the week with some moisture moving back in heat index values or heat indice temperatures those could be pushing 100 to 105 degrees so yes looking at a hot week i think it's the last week of school for a bunch of us so looking like a very hot week uh, just before summer kicks off all right well thank you guys and thank you all for being with us and hope you have an amazing night and even better week